let's bring in Scott Geekers who joins us live from Longleaf Trading Group in Chicago. Scott, pleasure to have you with us today. Tell us a bit more about what you've moved, made of that move for oil, both Brent and WTI mate, moving, making their way higher through the session. Is it down to the, the shutdown of that pipeline? Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest headline that we've seen is, you know, that pipeline has a huge impact. <clears throat> you know, it could affect, you know, the UK by almost 10% or so. You know, not only just that, but it's also going to affect all the other aspects as far as, you know, the workers that get that pipeline up and running. You know, so, you know, if you're going to see the workers not being able to work and not having those jobs, that's going to affect things on the other side, too. You know, even with the, the increase in the rig count last week, you know, that we thought that would, you know, pull back a little bit, but that hasn't affected the prices at all, especially with this pipeline closure. So with the pipeline closure, that's a big significant news. That's why you are seeing prices still, be, you, know, you know, moving higher. You know, we did break that 58 level. You know, if we get a close above that 58 level, it's going to be off to the races. We could take the test 60, you know, fairly soon. Now, in addition to that pipeline, we mentioned the UAE's energy minister has come out saying that uh, OPEC may draft a strategy in June to actually end the curbs if the mar market's no longer oversupplied there. Um, Russia, I know, is, is pretty keen to end those output cuts as, as early as possible. Is there a high possibility, Scott, that we could right. see the group's production cuts actually coming to an end before 2019 if the market does, in fact, rebal rebalance by June? Well, yeah, that's a lot of ifs, though, you know, so the, the with, if they're going to curb that those sanctions like that, you know, it's all going to de determine on what the numbers are going to be leading up to in June. Now, you said that uh, just now that, you know, Russia's eagerly, you know, trying to curb that. You know, one of the headlines that just came across as I was walking up is the rumor is Russia's going to try to maybe make payments in Bitcoin, which is very surprising. You know, if they can make you know, payments in Bitcoin versus the dollar, they're, it's going to do that to limit the U.S. sanctions. So that's that's an interesting twist in this whole you know soap opera as far as oil goes. Um, and look, are we expecting tighter markets? Do you think in 2018? Yeah, you know, the demand for Asia is increasing day by day. So until those numbers turn over, you know, yeah, we definitely expect you know more exports to China. All right, excellent. Look, Scott, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. We do appreciate you joining us today, though. Thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you.